The exhibition opened again today, so we love the other side of the town, 10 o'clock tomorrow. Come along and see it. It's a fabulous place. And thank you for joining us. Funny you should say that. Mike, I'm standing next to Chris Neal. I was just going to talk to him about uh, this next exhibition or next exit, exhibit here. Um, you're, you're having very nice things said about you, Chris, by, uh, oh, uh, by Mike from Tillingham. Um, just take it from me, you'd be blushing if you could hear it. <laughs> Tell us about this amazing mock up of the, the Titanic radio room. Well, it's, this was one of the surprises. When we opened this exhibition, we did not have this here. Uh, and this chap walked in here when we were open about two weeks and showed me a photograph of the, of the replica Titanic wireless room and he said, would we like the picture? Uh, when I discovered that this was in his garage, I said, well, it would be much better if we actually had the equipment. Um, so this is Ted Sinclair in Norfolk, um, built this from photographs and visiting other museums and he's built probably the truest replica of a Titanic wireless room that I suspect exists. Uh, to this day, and here it is in history. And of course, w w without the wireless room, without Marconi, uh, and without Chunksford's import, many more lives would have been lost when the Titanic went down than, than actually were. That's right, and in fact, the equipment we're looking at right now, the replica equipment, most of that equipment, the original equipment, was built in this very building. Um, so all of the Titanic wireless equipment and many of the other ships uh, prior to 1912, their equipment was built in here. And Chris, all of the radio signals to and from the Titanic and other ships, the few ships that were around that were equipped with wireless in those early days, it, it would have been Morse code. It wouldn't have been speech, would it? I uh, know, it was all Morse code at that time. Um, and we had a really good talk here uh, uh, two weeks ago from Tim Moulton, who's a great expert on the Titanic. Uh, and he talked us all the way through the whole of the unfolding drama of the sinking of the Titanic. And we had the Chelmsford Amateur Radio Society were here and they were sending out the Morse as we were going through it. We were actually hearing the Morse signals that were sent during that drama. It was fantastic, a really, really interesting evening. And uh, amazing that the, the two radio officers stayed by their post until the very last. They were still sending out messages as, as water was lapping around their feet. They were. Uh, sadly, the chief uh, wireless operator drowned, but the other one was saved. He was bad when he was picked up by the Carpathia. He was badly frostbitten. He was carried, he was stretched onto the ship. Um, but guess what? On the Carpathia, they only had one wireless operator. The, the wireless operator couldn't work 24 hours a day. So the chap from the Titanic helped out in the wireless room, strapped up with all his. Um, uh, with his, with his high, uh, you know, with his crossbite and, and, and all the rest, and yeah. he carried on to the very end until the ship got back into uh, into New York. Just uh, amazing the story of uh, Marconi and all that followed, uh, both for entertainment, both for ed education, and, and and for saving lives. And those messages being relayed now. This is Andy, Andy Kersey. We spoke to him on the program just a few weeks ago. What message are you sending there, Andy? Just sending uh, the morning old man, he's a uh, radio amateur, and the uh, Java news by the radio officers in those days. Okay, we'll come back to you a little later. Let's hear an appropriate song now. Here's Christa Berg on BBC Essex. Uh, as we continue with our broadcast from the original wireless factory, this is Ship to Ship. That's a nice little bit of juggle between all of us. Let's get and we, we've got to, Andy, we'll come to you again. We'll, we'll do more, Andy. I we'll couldn't see who you were pointing to. You were talking about more, so I we'd really yeah, love to hear it in the background. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll just back announce this and say, OK, news is next on BBC S6. Into the jingle, and then back to me and Andy with the more. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Cheers, pal. Oh,
I mean, that was lovely. If you want to do about 40 seconds of that, I'll start talking and just keep going to stop doing you, if that's yeah. okay. That sounds it. really good. So people have to start now. Okay, okay mate. Yep. It's news time now on BBC Essex. June Wollerton has the latest local, national, international news on BBC Essex at 10 o'clock. Oh, was that what you were? Oh, yeah. lovely! That's, that's good. Somebody might have sussed it out. Oh, they, they were <laughs> the experts. One keen, keen Morse reader. Super. Oh, right, nice little gap here. Steve, yeah. microphone. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Only, not just that, I mean that would be fun to do, but it would be a bit boring after a minute or two. Uh, but there's a fabulous display here and has been for the last six weeks or so, continuing for a while, telling the story of Chelmsford and Marconi. It's absolutely free to come in and have a look and we welcome you all the way through today and tomorrow. Wall Street, just off the Odeon Roundabout, just off Parkway in Chelmsford. Come and join us. If you can't, stay with us here on BBC Essex. It's Stevie Wimbledon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this would have been in New Street, would it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe, you were talking about the ship to shore a minute ago, which is your lovely story about talking to the captain. Yeah, well, if it wasn't for my coach, I couldn't have done it. No. I was at a lessonist in 1900, and I did get a big picture of the ship to shore. Oh, my goodness, yes. And because of don't, don't tell the story now, because no, otherwise... I, I went, no surprise, you can surprise yeah, tell me in a moment. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll be with you back to three minutes later. Thank you. Essex from Marconi's Wireless Factory in Hall Street. Come along and join us. We're still looking for your memories as well of uh, anything radio or wireless. Perhaps you're listening to us on your lovely Marconi phone, I don't know, radiogram in the corner. Perhaps you've still got that going. Perhaps you work for Echo. Perhaps you worked for Marconi. And perhaps you were Pirate. Perhaps you worked for the BBC over the years. There's plenty of scope. Well, Mavis, she was never a pirate and she doesn't look like a pirate. This is Mavis Thrift who's sitting next to me, but her husband worked as an accountant at Marconi's and you were connected with the radio industry as well, weren't you, Mavis? Yeah, sort of. I started working in this city and I did quite well, so they put me in the ship to show radio, so it's great then. But it was quite exciting. I was told that I had a night radio in the area. When our ships were coming to the English Channel to unload the London docks, I could try and move on radio or night radio, and then when they could get through, they say, the people who did it for me, they'd say, right, we're now through to the St. Thomas, and they'd say, welcome home, Captain Owen, give me your ETA for the London docks, Roger and out, because if we both spoke together, the line had died completely. So, um, then he'd say, I'll be in the London docks, but we've got to go to Roger and out, you're due to go to the Royal Arts, and um, then he'd say, Roger and out. And it was really enjoyable. It would have been something they'd look forward to if you've been yeah. sailing around the world and you wanted a nice friendly voice to, to welcome you back home and, and there was Mavis to say hello, we're waiting for yeah. you. But also in those days, if my boss wanted to talk to you at the moment, come through Wednesday afternoon and you'd be told you've got three minutes on this call because there are sunspots on the line. And I'd say to my boss, you've only got three minutes on me. Oh, for goodness sake, so how can I possibly do it? Mavis said that that job, I suppose, is gone now. It's all done by computer, well, isn't it? And then, you know, no, 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 a telephonist. I mean, I used to be a bus conductor. There's hardly many bus conductors around, and no telephonist. I, so you must have had to have those Bakelite headphone things on. Yes. 
gosh, she had sweaty ears all day. Never mind, dear. I was getting two pounds a week, so you come out with <laughs> Mavis, Mavis, Mavis. Great story. Thank you, Mavis. If you come along to uh, this exhibition throughout the day, you can read the weather forecast. Yeah, I, I know it's easy to do. Today will be hot and dry and tomorrow it will be snowing. Uh, but this is quite difficult because you have to do all the stuff with waving your hands around or all the graphics. Uh, you can have the cloud, you can have the snow. You know the stuff they do on the television? You can have a go at that here at Wall Street. But also, uh, something we're going to have a try at a little later, the BBC Sound Effects Department. Uh, we've just got a, a few examples of sound effects that are used on radio documentaries and plays, and in particular plays, things like The Arches. Uh, you can recreate Ambridge. Just come along, we'll show you how it works. In fact, we'll give you a demonstration as to how it works here on BBC Essex in the next little while. It's 13 minutes past 10. Another song, I think, then we'll check all the road and round news. Let's keep on running. The Spencer Davis Group. We played Stevie Winwood before. One and the same here on BBC Essex on a Saturday morning. Oh, was, was that live? Well done, no, lovely. Yes. Oh, I thought it was just recorded. Oh, no, 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 it's probably oh, no, gone. It's live, Mavis. You've been on the radio. You've been on the radio. Andy Bass. Good morning, it is Planet Ray, live from the world's first wireless factory in Chelmsford. Uh, we're going to talk Morse again now. There was a song back in the 80s, Da Da Di Da. Now, if I were to walk down the road and come up to you and go, Da 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 Di Da Da Di Da 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 Di Da Da Da, you'd think I was sillier than you already know I am. Uh, but this man can do it and get away with it. This is Andy Percy, uh, who who uh, commented earlier. No, it's all about more. Mr. Teacher, Andy, you still do? Yes, we still teach it in Danbury uh, Village Hall on a Thursday evening. So anybody's uh, welcome, either experienced or from square one, you can learn more skills. Too many people want to learn more skills. It's becoming very popular again. At one time, you had to learn Morse code, but now they don't have to do it. You get quite a few people wanting to learn Morse code. So these are all amateur radio operators that want to learn. It's not just the, the, the normal sort of I don't know guy on the street that thinks it would be a fun thing to do to learn Morse. Yes, we have had people like that who come in and just want to learn Morse code, but the majority are radio amateurs. Now, how easy or difficult is it to pick up? Because looking at this, this looks so, so bonkers, basically. If you come in my class, you'll find it nice and easy. You can learn Morse code in eight weeks. What about learning to Morse my name? Is that the right terminology? Or dot my name? Or dash my name? I don't quite understand that. Well, if I were to... No, never mind. It's, it's, no, yes, okay. no, don't worry. Stick with the Morse. <laughs> So if I wanted to, to send, oh that's the word, if I wanted to send my yes, name, yes. Ray, nice yes. easy name, that should be okay. Should <laughs> yes, yes, just send, uh, you can send it. Okay, well look, hang on, I need a little bit of help here. So if I can get uh, Ian White or Steve Scrutiners here. Steve, can you just hang on to that because I'm going to do something world, world shopping this is. So it's a, a dot, and then, so that's a... That's R, yeah? Hang on, now. Uh, just in case you're listening in a far off country, I'm not in distress. Please don't worry about it. <laughs> so, this will be. Let's have a go. Uh, oh, I can't see the piece of paper now. Hang on, here we go. Now, this is for real. This That was just a practice. There, how about that? I've, I've communicated with somebody in a far off planet. Well done, Ray. That's very good. Andy, thank you. Let's go to uh, one of your colleagues here. This is Colin, Colin Page. Uh, and you're a member of Chelmsford Amateur Radio Society. Colin, you're what's known as a radio ham. Tell us more about that. Well, Radio Ham is an uh, amateur radio society, as you say, in Chelmsford. And uh, hams communicate with other hams locally or worldwide, actually. You can pick up the phone and do that, though. Why, why worry about all this paraphernalia? Well, we can talk to anybody um, in the world. Um, people who do that telephone, but our advantage is they need to know the telephone number of that person before they can contact them. We can just put out what's called a CQ call and anybody who's listening can answer. So we can talk to anybody 
who happens to be on the same wavelength as we are when they're transmitting on the, on the, on the radio sets. So purely out of interest, you're starting to have a conversation with somebody you've never met, you don't know in a, in a far off country? Absolutely, yes. You, you don't never know really who's going to answer the phone when you put it. You see Q call it. And so it could be anybody, and not necessarily who speak in English, because we use certain codes that we can get information across about the weather conditions, weather's interference, and any other uh, things we need to talk about. What's your, your, your prized contact? Which is the contact that's furthest away or most difficult to get? Who have you spoken to in the past? That you, you, If we were having a drink in a bar, you'd say, do you know who I spoke to one evening? Well, my uh, one and only long distance call was to Australia. And that was when conditions were very good. Because uh, radio shortwave conditions vary accordingly to the weather, the time of day, what sort of equipment you've got, what sort of areas. So there's so many variables. You never quite know what's going to happen from one day to the next. But in this digital age, why are you still messing around with shortwaves? Shouldn't you, you have them clean clinical sounds? Oh, we do, yes. Yeah, certainly, uh, more and more these days, computers are used now to radio. And uh, a lot of data modes as well, where uh, you can uh, send information very slowly or very quickly and uh, still make contact. But the the person-to-person -person voice contact still has that extra thrill. And if you work somebody in a, a remote country, it is most interesting and, and thoroughly worthwhile. And are youngsters getting involved? Are you finding youngsters coming along and wanting to know about this? Or is it a more mature a male domain? Or, or do the ladies take part as well? Oh no, ladies take part. There's a certain uh, young ladies association with radio amateurs. And uh, youngsters are suggest coming in, and they are certainly interested. And uh, we run training courses at the Chompton Radio Society. So anybody from 10 to 10 to 100 can come along and uh, we give them uh, tests. We show them how, how the whole thing works, and they pass tests and get their license, and then they can buy equipment and talk anywhere they need to. Colin, it's a fascinating topic. I, I, I just pull on, pull you up on one thing. So you're talking about the ladies, but isn't the terminology all about hello, old man? I mean, do you don't say hello, old girl if you get some, some lady in France or whatever? No, they're, they're called IL, young ladies. Young ladies, always young ladies, are they? Oh yes, yes, indeed they are. Quite right, right too. Radio Gaga. Uh, no, that's not what we're talking. It's the song. It's Queen here on BBC Essex at 10:23. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Thank you very much. Your fans are coming in now. No, you'd imagine that I was six feet tall, full head of hair, dark hair, yeah. Smoke the pipe. We're going to take you this way, right? Nice to see you. What's your name? Shirley Tapp. Hello, Shirley. Lovely to meet you. Thank you very much for coming along and saying hello. All right. I'll catch up with you perhaps a little later. Good to see you again. Nice to see you. Here. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. I was looking at that just the other day. Let's still kick it around on YouTube. And, uh, off the wall, oh, and you've got to get ready to point and uh, weather with you, perhaps, by a crowded house. We're just going to do the weather forecast. So. Okay, between the dots, just read your name. All right. Yeah? Oh, but this is the man who will tell you all about it. So listen to this man. All right. In the dots here. In fact, you can see. Start again. You've got the George Pugh at the top, Pete's in the dots, just filling your name. The bottom screen, you can see yourself. This is today's weather? No, unfortunately not. No, not today. I'll make my own word. No, if you just follow the script. Just read the screen. Read the screen. Where the dots are, it's your name. You put oh, your right, name in. Right, right, right. And what was it again? Jeremy, I knew that. <laughs> I'll stick this under your nose, so don't worry about that. So you're just going to read the weather, right? You're on the telly. Carol Kirk, okay. Where are you from, Shirley? Where do you live? Stop. From Stock. Okay, whenever you're ready. Okay, we've got about a minute or so to, unless you want to do a practice run. Or... Do you want to do a practice run? Yes, okay, here we are. Start reading when you're 90. ready. Ready to go. Go. Hello, this is Shirley with the weather for Essex and the East. This afternoon in the region, there will be rain moving in from the west into Cambridgeshire and the north of Essex. 
It will spread south through the afternoon with heavy prolonged downpours in, oh, that'd in be the good, southern wouldn't? part of the county. Temperatures will reach 10 yeah. degrees with winds light to moderate. Tying dog a bite, Russ. I think she's brilliant, don't you? Tomorrow morning, we'll running out of time here a bit, so. And sunshine with some sunny clouds. And the prospect of light showers <laughs> yeah. in the northwest of the region. And the outlook for the chance for the rest of the week. Mostly rain on Wednesday. So, we'll have a word. Shirley will do the weather forecast. Back to the beginning. At the end of it, can you all give her a big round of applause? And then, Mark, if we can go into weather with you by Crowded House, yeah? Just, I won't come back in again. Can you make it clear to the listening audience, this isn't today's work? Okay, I'll, I'll do it. It's not today's work. So it's not being broadcast to the nation. Only on the radio, not the telly. <laughs> <laughs> radio Gaga, you get plenty of it for number hour. Plenty this morning as well here on BBC. It's coming up to half past ten. We are at the world's first glass factory, Crow Street in Chelmsford. And one of the things that I mentioned a little earlier is that you can read the weather forecast. No, you really can. In fact, we'll, we'll get our new weather forecaster for BBC Essex, Shirley, in the stop to bring you a forecast, not necessarily today's, in just a moment. But first of all, let's find out more about this. This is Diane, from, uh, who's come up from Cardiff, uh, who's just looking away thinking, I only work for the BBC, I don't want to work and talk on the radio. What's all this kit about? So basically what we do is um, put an image on the background so you can read off the uh, portrait view so you can see and, and uh, see what's uh, on the screen in front of you and um, so we can do stuff like the weather, so broadcast the weather and um, we the script at the same time. So this is, this is all clever stuff because all the graphics uh, are taken care of with your machine. So basically, Shirley, when she reads the news, has got to wave her arms about as well, but she's just standing in front of a green screen. So those around can't see the graphics that we could see at home, and Shirley can see when she looks at the screen. Yeah, exactly. Okay, it's all clever stuff for you, yeah. isn't it? You do on the time. All technical. All right, well, let, let, let's give this a try. Shirley, you're from Stock. Yes. Right, now, have you ever fancied being a weather girl? Had you ever thought of it until you came into this building? Do you think you'll make a very good weather girl? Okay, we're five seconds to transmission. Hold on. Now on BBC One, made up weather with Shirley. Over to the weather office. Hello, this is Shirley with the weather for Essex and the East. This afternoon in the region, there will be rain moving in from the west into Cambridgeshire and the north of Essex. It will spread south in the afternoon with heavy and prolonged downpours and in the southern part of the county. The temperatures will reach 10 degrees with winds light to moderate and the rain clearing tonight. Tomorrow morning we can look forward to clear skies and the sunshine with some scattered clouds and the prospect of light showers in the northwest of the region. And the outlook for church and for the rest of the week. Is what do you fancy for the rest of the week? Sunshine? <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> All right, sunshine for the rest of the week, Shirley, the new BBC weather forecast. <laughs> 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 Have you been kissed by a weather forecast? <laughs> I'm not as glad as this. You were lovely. Well done. Did you enjoy it? Yes. Did you have time to see yourself on the pictures? No. Perhaps if you speak to this man nicely, he might let you do it again. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether you can see on the background there, you can see Robinson Jones. Yes, and then the road tree, and then you can change the background as the water. Oh, right, yes, it's called in as the city on their way through. Is this the real thing? This is the real thing. 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 Don't worry if it goes wrong, it's a tactic on the rather routine.
Have you got a big pub? I've got a crisp pub. Oh, right. oh, right. See, they, uh, they always recognise that my uh, well, memory for names is poor, so they've given me a pub with my own name. What is it? Scripts for a photo. Yes, we're in the Posing for photos. Are we posing, are we? Trust you to be making all this racket. Oh, yeah. Well, why not? As in TV Is it old school weather with the old clouds? Is it the new stuff? It's the new stuff. Going up a goat's I might do. It's come up all the way from Wales. Really? Who's Wales? Oh, right, okay. I think I see. Oh, 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 I see. I am, yes, yeah. <laughs> okay, I've got a pointed question for you. Leave or stay? Oh, I can't. I, <laughs> you're going to get me in trouble. I'm, I'm completely impartial on that particular question. <laughs> of course. They've got their own minds. Of course you are. No and now it's time for the BBC Essex afternoon play, direct from the Marconi exhibition in Cheltenham, the birthplace of radio. And I hope you're ready as you're invited to a particularly scary dinner party. How long till we get there? Aren't you going any faster, Francis? How lovely to get out of town for a change. Oh no, I don't believe it. We've broken down. I told you we should keep the car back before we left, Francis. Let's try it again. It may be just that the engine's a bit cold. Oh dear. Oh dear. It's no good. There's nothing happening at all. I think the battery must have died. Well, it's certainly great timing. Here in the middle of nowhere, just like one of those bad radio plays. Yeah, that's it. Well, we'd better get out and ask someone to for some help. All right, come on. Oh, 
cold and I'm rather scared. Oh look, there's a path here leading to that creepy old place at the top of the hill. Let's ask there. Hey, let's run. We'll get there faster. Come on. Oh no, it's such hard work running against all this wind. Oh, rubbish. Come on. You can do it. Phew! Made it! What a huge old house! Isn't it sinister? Do you think there's someone home? Try the knocker. It's so heavy! Oh, honestly, Francis, you're hopeless. We'll ring the bell instead. Someone's coming! Come in, come in. We've been expecting you. Sorry? You're expecting us? Not another, not another word. Come in. We'll catch your death. Thank you very much. Dinner will be served in ten minutes. A glass of champagne is in order, I think. Now look, there must be some mistake. Oh, I don't know. Never say no to a glass of champers. Wow, that must have been a real birthday. Cheers! Cheers! What on earth is that? It's the master. Sounds like he's waking up. He'll be down now. I think we should go. Don't you everyone? Good grief! What, what on earth was that? The master, down for dinner. I'll just call the other guests as well. Our guests? Yes, they're just hanging around upstairs. And what's for dinner? You! <laughs> And you still love it, do you? Oh, you can't leave it alone, can you? It's like uh, it's like getting on the merry-go-round, you know, you can't get off. Let's have a, a chat with one or two of the actors and actresses. <laughs> Is this the leading lady here? Hello, what's your name? Peggy. Hello, Peggy. Nice to see you. Um, what part are you playing? I'm playing Joe. Um, do we know anything about Joe? No, not really. She's quite a nice lady. Well, I hope so, because you've only read page one. I mean, yeah, you could get to page five yeah, and find out all sorts of shocking she's things very going on. Good. She's very good. <laughs> All right, Joe, I'll, I'll be prepared to listen to you in just a moment. I mentioned leading lady. There's another leading lady here, it's Pam, that we spoke to a little earlier. Oh, well, no, it's not. It was. Oh, close. Very close. <laughs> you you look like a Pam. Oh, this is Ros, we haven't spoken to her earlier. Uh, so what are you doing, Ros? I'm the posh one. Do you do posh? Uh, 
Okay. It sounds okay to me. It's, it's pretty posh. Uh, uh, this man we've certainly spoken to before. This is Chris. And, and what are you playing here, Chris? Um, it's really hard to guess. I'm playing Chris. A bit of typecasting. Yeah. So, oh, well, and who's this? Oh, my goodness. A famous actor flown in at uh, no expense at all. Yes. Peter Holmes. I am the <laughs> Give him a microphone and a bit of acting in this stage. If anyone's going to camp it up, Holmes is the right man, right place. Uh, are we ready, are we? The studio director is the guy. So, what do you do on the side? 